Inglewood, California. Evidence. Ever increasing faith. Evidence. Just your life showing up evidence. With pastor and teacher, Dr. Frederick K. Price. Welcome to Ever Increasing Faith. Remember these words from the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Well, praise God for another day, and for another privilege and opportunity to share with you the living word of God. Let's turn in our Bibles to Galatians chapter 5. And we want to continue our study in the book of Galatians. We are studying it on a verse-by-verse -verse expository teaching set up and we left off at verse 22 we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit as recorded in verses 22 and 23 now as I pointed out before you can't really talk about the fruit of the Spirit without also bringing into play the gifts of the Spirit and you can never really talk about the gifts of the Spirit fully without bringing in the fruit of the Spirit. In other words, you could talk about the gifts and you could talk about the fruit, but there is also a place where you can talk about both of them together and then you will see both of them in a new light because the fruit of the Spirit are designed to balance the gifts of the Spirit. In other words, the gifts of the Spirit should operate by the buffer of the fruit of the Spirit. When they do, then they will operate as they truly were designed to operate. Now, <clears throat> we are, we have been talking about some of the different aspects concerning the fruit and mentioning also the gifts, but I want us to read here now in verse 22 of Galatians 5 what these particular fruit are. Now, let's be, let's read together verses 22 and 23. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Now, as I pointed out last time, we are never told to pray for fruit, but we are told to pray or covet or desire that the gifts would be in operation. And I pointed out to you that the fruit of the Spirit or fruits of the Spirit, whichever way you want to term it, they are the caricature traits of the recreated human spirit. And the seeds of the fruit of the Spirit are planted in our spirits at day one when we are born again. When we become new creatures in Christ Jesus, the Heavenly Father plants within our recreated spirit the fruit, or the seeds rather, of the fruit of the Spirit. It's up to us then, through holy living and through proper spiritual exercise, to begin to develop the fruit in our lives so that it shines through us. Now, I pointed out that in John 15, where it talks about, where Jesus mentions the fact that I am the vine and ye are the branches, and if you abide in me, you shall bring forth much fruit. And some have thought, I used to think it myself, that that fruit he was talking about there was me going out and winning other people to Christ. So if I went out and I was influential in winning this one, this one, and this one to Christ, then I had, been, I had brought forth some fruit. But it's not talking about that at all. It's talking about the fruit of my spirit, these things that we just read in Galatians that should shine through our lives and show the grace of God in our daily living and in our daily activities. Now, I pointed out last time as we were closing also, I don't want to look it up, but if you'll remember over in the 13th chapter of John, in the upper room, Jesus said to the disciples, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples because you have love one to another. Now you see, we are supposed to do the works that Christ did, which were the mighty signs and wonders, opening the eyes of the blind, raising the dead, ministering to the sick. All of those things are beautiful, wonderful. They are great, they are proper, and we ought to expect for them to operate 
But nowhere did Jesus ever say that they will know you're my disciples because you raised the dead, yet we ought to raise the dead as such. He never said they will know that you are my disciples because you lay hands on the sick and they recover, and yet he told us to do that. But he did say they will know that you're my disciples because you have love. So the fruit of the Spirit, referred to in Galatians 5, is the fruit of our recreated spirit, not the Holy Spirit. And I realize that in the King James Version of the Bible there, in Galatians 5.22, the word spirit is capitalized, but it ought to be small case S because it's not talking about the Holy Ghost. He doesn't have any fruit and doesn't need any. He's perfect, but we're not. And fruit implies growth and development and maturity. You follow what I mean? Going from a seed up to a full grown and developed plant. Now, today I want to talk about the fact that love is the first and greatest fruit of the Spirit. You will notice that as we read there in Galatians 5, 22, it said that the fruit of the Spirit is love. The very first one mentioned is love. And love is the greatest of the fruit of the Spirit if we read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, which is referred to as the love chapter, we see the importance of love. But we need to be very clear on this, and that is that love is a fruit of the Spirit and not a gift. You'll hear people say, oh, we shouldn't talk so much about faith and we shouldn't talk so much about gifts of the Spirit. And we shouldn't talk so much about all of these supernatural things. We need to talk more about love. I'm seeking the greatest gift of all, the gift of love. Well, now that's commendable, but it's unscriptural. It is unscriptural because love is not a gift. Love is a fruit. It's not a gift. So you shouldn't be seeking love. What you ought to be doing is allowing love to develop in your spirit and flow out of your life to other people. Do you follow me? Because love is not a gift. It is a fruit of the spirit. Now let me show you a, a, a passage of scripture that will show what I just said. It will show gifts and fruit in juxtaposition to each other. In other words, it will show them balanced off between one another, and you'll be able to see very clearly that gifts are not fruit and fruit are not gifts. Look at 1 Corinthians 14, 1. We'll see a passage here that's so very clear that you'd have to be deaf, dumb, blind, or dishonest not to see this. And I will let you be the judge as to which you are. Now, you know in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it talks about charity. And I'm sure you've heard ministers uh, give you the explanation of what the word charity means. It doesn't mean something for the poor folks. But charity means love. Talking about agape or love. Now notice 1 Corinthians 14, 1. It says, follow after charity. I happen to be reading from the King James Bible. But if we wanted to paraphrase this and make it exactly what it says in the Greek, we would say it like this, follow after love. It says now, follow after love and desire spiritual gifts. So if he tells me to follow after love and desire spiritual gifts, then spiritual gifts must not be love and love must not be spiritual gifts. Or why say it like that? He says follow after love by itself separately, but then he says desire spiritual gifts, plural. So apparently love is not included in spiritual gifts and spiritual gifts are not included in love. How many of you can see that? Can you see that? All right, he says follow after love and desire spiritual gifts. Now, you will notice if you turn now to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, turn there, you will notice that love is not mentioned under the nine gifts of the Spirit. I want you to see this from the Bible for yourself. Now, notice verse 8. We'll read verses 8, 9, and 10 of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And this is a listing of what is commonly referred to as the gifts of the Spirit. Now, I want you to keep your eyes open for the word love. I want you to look very carefully to find the word love, okay? Verse 8, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. 
to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Now those are the nine, what are referred to as the nine gifts or nine manifestations of the Spirit. One thing is conspicuous in its absence, and that is that you see nothing mentioned about love. Did you notice that? Love was not included. There were nine things included there, but love was not one of them. So it's incorrect to say, I'm seeking the greatest gift of all. Fred Price always talking about faith. Fred Price is always talking about the gifts of the Spirit. Crenshaw Christian Center is always talking about the supernatural. But I'm going to look for and seek after the greatest gift of all, the gift of love. That's unscriptural. It is commendable. But it's misdirected, incorrect, and unscriptural. There is no such thing as the gift of love. Love is not a gift. Love is a fruit, and it has to be developed, and you're the one that has to develop it in your own life. Now, some people expect love to be dropped into their hearts, complete in itself. That's the way the gifts are. When they come there and, and manifest through you, they're complete in themselves. They don't have to grow up. The word of knowledge doesn't have to grow. When it comes and manifests itself, it's total and complete right then when it manifests itself. Prophecy is complete when it manifests itself. You follow me? But love is planted in our hearts at the new birth, and it's a seed, and it has to grow. It has to be developed. It has to be cultivated. It has to be fed. It has to be watered. It has to be allowed to have the right environment in order for it to blossom forth. Gifts, zap, they just happen. And suddenly there they are in manifestation. So we have to understand that the fruit of the Spirit has to develop and grow and be perfected in our life. And it can only grow and it can only be perfected by a life of close communion and fellowship with the Lord and in no other way. You can't run off and do your own thing and expect love or any of the fruits to develop in your life. You have to stay in close communion. You can't fall in and out of love with the Lord. You know, you're on one day and off the next day. You know, this business of in and out. Uh-uh-uh. No, no, no. No, you've got to stay in close, constant communion. It's the same thing with breathing air. We are air-breathing animals. And you don't breathe for seven hours of the day and stop breathing for the eighth hour. You're dead if you do. <laughs> to maintain physical life, it's constant breathing all the time. And thank God he has a built-in mechanism in us that causes us to breathe even while we're asleep or else we'd die in our sleep. You follow what I mean? So you have to breathe all the time. Well, if you want the fruit to develop in your life and if you want love to truly develop, you have to stay in close and constant, consistent communion with the Lord. Now, if we take love as described in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 13 as being not only the first of the fruit of the Spirit according to Galatians 5.22, we are now in a position to notice something of utmost importance to us if we are truly to obey the Lord and grow up spiritually in the things of the Lord. And that is to notice the relationship between fruit, and gifts. Something very striking, something very, very beneficial, and something that I'm sure that 99% of you that are listening to me now have never seen. It is very interesting to note that there are nine gifts of the Spirit and there are also nine fruit of the Spirit. And they are designed to balance one another off. They are designed to work with one another. For instance, again, we don't need to read it, but you remember we just read. Well, let's go back to it. We, we need to look at it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, again. Now, here's what I want to do. I'm going to make Mark here our, our official counter. So I'm going to read these nine gifts of the Spirit. Every time you hear me mention, you all follow along. But every time you mention, you hear me mention one of the gifts of the Spirit, you'll have to use your fingers perhaps and, and keep count. But when I, when I say the first one, you say one. When I say the second one, you say two. I want everybody here. You got it? Okay. All right, practice. Say one. One. Is your name Mark? 
I said, Mark, I said one and but 15 people said one. <laughs> Any other time you'd be asleep on me. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> Silencio, everybody else. I like that, Steve. Uh, okay. All right. One. Okay, he's got it. All right. Now, as I read, every time I hit one of the gifts of the Spirit, you say whatever number that is. If it's the third one, you say three, right? All right, here we go. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. One. To another the... <laughs> Did I hear one? Who said that? Who said that? I said, Mark. Oh, uh, somebody behind you, huh? Uh, Y'all, you, nobody is to say anything. The only people that, that are to be speaking, me and Mark. Understandest what thou hearest? All right, here we go. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. One. To another, the word of knowledge. Two. By the same Spirit. To another, faith. Three. By the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healings. Four. By the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. Five. To another, prophecy. Six. To another, discerning of spirits. Seven. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. Eight. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Nine. Nine. Got that? Did you get that? You got that? All right, everybody. Now, turn to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, this time, Hector, you'll be the counter, okay? If your name is not Hector, don't say anything. <laughs> all right, as I, as, as I read each one of these, you'll have to count now, all right? Verse 22 and 23 of Galatians chapter 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. One. Joy. Two. Peace. Three. Long-suffering. Four. Gentleness. Five. Goodness. Six. Faith. Seven. <laughs> Meekness. <laughs> he almost lost his count. <laughs> he almost lost his count. <laughs> he almost messed me up too. I'm gonna say yeah, I know. he's gonna say in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even count in English. How are you gonna count in Spanish? <laughs> all right, we have to do this again. Now, you messed up. All right, you gotta you gotta count in English now. You gotta you gotta count in English. <laughs> All right. I tell you what we'll do. We'll make this a little bit interesting. Uh, we'll make this a little bit interesting. Uh, we'll make this a little bit interesting. Uh, this time you count in Spanish. Okay. And you count. Oh, he liked that. Okay. Okay. You <laughs> like that, huh? Uh. Parlez-vous français? No, espanol. No, espanol. Oh, espanol. All right. Sandra, you, you count in English. Okay. Out loud now. All right. Here we go. We're starting in. Uh, Ephes uh, e e Galatians 5, 22. All right, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Uno. One. Joy. Dos. Two. Louder, Sandra. Say joy again. Two. Peace. Tres. Three. Long-suffering. Cuatro. Four. Gentleness. Cinco. Five. Goodness. Seis. Six. Faith. Siete. Seven. Meekness. Ocho. Eight. Temperance. Nueve. Nine. Against such there is no love. <laughs> All right. Right on. All right. Now, notice, again, there are nine gifts of the Spirit and nine fruit of the Spirit. Isn't that interesting? It's not by accident. Believe me. They are designed to work and function together. And that's why they're there like that. Now, in 1 Corinthians 13, which is the great love chapter, it's, it's interesting to note that the great love chapter is placed right in between the most explicit chapters in the Bible that have to do with the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. Right between 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 14, which describe as no other passages in the Bible describe the gifts and the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. Right in between them is the chapter on love, or we could say the fruit of the Spirit. Why? Because it's designed to be a buffer between the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. <clears throat> now, the first fact that 
we see here, as I said before, is that the gifts and the fruit, and I, I want to say it again because I don't want you to forget it, that the gifts and the fruit balance each other. Say that. Not only do they balance one another, but they are intimately connected with one another. And you, you really can, as I said, fully, in the fullest sense of the word, know what's going on with gifts and with fruit without, at, le at least at some point in time, looking at them side by side. Now, Paul's exhortation concerning a more excellent way. Look at 1 Corinthians.